Hey everybody, welcome back to The Captain's Coffee. I'm David, and today I'm gonna to show you how I installed a thermocouple in my Fresh Roast SR800. It's a pretty simple modification, and it's made a big difference in my roasting. And it works no matter how I choose to configure my roaster. I could be using the stock uh, SR800, the SR540, uh, an extension tube like this, or even an older version of the Razo chamber, and this method works just fine for me. If you don't know what a thermocouple is or why they're useful, don't worry. I'm going to go over all that, tell you all about them. And uh, hey, if you're here because you already know all that and you just want to see the installation, there's chapters down in the progress bar, so you can just skip ahead to the important stuff. But just before we get into it, you know what time it is. That's right. It's time for a shameless plug. If you like what we do here on this channel and you're in need of a home coffee roaster like the SR800, you can pick one up from us at thecaptainscoffee.com. We've also got a whole heap and ton premium fresh green beans from all over the world. And we carry some of the best coffee in the world because roasting great coffee is so much easier when you start with great green beans. Makes sense, right? Quality in, quality out. So head on over to thecaptainscoffee.com or use the link in the description below and tell them David sent you. Well, I guess you're talking to me. So, you know, tell me that I sent you to me for coffee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, your captain speaking. So first things first, what is a thermocouple and why do you care? Well, you're probably already familiar with what a thermometer is, like the ones your parents used to stick under your tongue to measure your body temperature when you were a kid. A thermocouple is the part of the thermometer that actually measures the temperature. It's the probe or sensor on the end that actually takes the reading. In fact, thermocouples are often just called temperature probes. The rest of the thermometer converts that reading into a number and then displays it for you. So if you remove the probe from that thermometer, you get two separate tools, the thermocouple, which measures the temperature and the thermometer, which then tells you that measurement. And you need both in order to actually know what the temperature is. And don't worry, we're going to cover both in this video. Now you know what a thermocouple does, but maybe you're wondering, why would I want one installed on my roaster? Well, one simple reason. We want to measure the actual temperature of our coffee beans during the roast. Also known as bean temperature, or BT for short, this reading tells us exactly what's happening to the beans in real time, instead of just relying on our senses. Now, don't get me wrong. I love sensory roasting, and I think it's a critical skill to learn. Just think of bean temperature as another tool in your toolbox, just like the air temperature readout displayed on the SR800. In fact, some roasters even add a second thermocouple in order to measure exhaust temperature, or ET. Now, today I'm just going to install a probe to measure bean temperature, but if I want to add a second for exhaust, it works almost exactly the same way. Now let's talk about what I decided to use for this build and why. Let's go ahead and start with the thermocouple itself. There are a ton of options out there, so let's narrow down the choices a bit. The first decision I needed to make was between rigid and flexible. Now I prefer a rigid thermocouple because that means it'll constantly be measuring the temperature at the same location, and that takes a variable out of this equation. Flexible thermocouples move all over the place and they create a lot of noise in my measurements. Noise is inaccurate or otherwise not useful data, and we want to minimize that as much as possible. So if we're talking rigid thermocouples, next comes thickness. Now thermocouple thickness is most commonly measured in millimeters. A very thin thermocouple, say one to two millimeters thick, is so thin that it might as well be a flexible thermocouple. Once again, too noisy for our purposes. On the other hand, if it's really thick, say six or more millimeters thick, we get lots of thermal lag. Now thermal lag means it takes too long for the actual temperature to get measured. So there's a delay between the temperature that's displayed and the actual temperature of the object being measured. Coffee roasting happens really fast, so we need to try and minimize that delay for accurate, up-to-date readings. So that means the Goldilocks thickness is three to five millimeters thick. 
The next thing that's important to consider is length. Now this one's a lot simpler. Since I want the end of the probe, the part that actually measures the temperature to be touching the beans, the length just depends on which chamber setup I happen to be using. So I have several. Now if I'm using the stock chamber, uh, I'd use a thermocouple that's 110 to 150 millimeters long, like this one. And if I'm using the fresh roast extension tube, I'm gonna want a thermocouple that's 250 to 300 millimeters long, so a good bit longer. And if I happen to be using the new Razo V5 chamber, I prefer a really short thermocouple, like this one. Now lately I've been really enjoying the factory extension tube from Fresh Roast, so today I'm installing a four millimeter thick probe that's 300 millimeters long. Next, I'm gonna need a thermometer that can interface with my thermocouple. Again, there's a lot of options out there, so let's narrow it down based on what I wanna do. If all I want is to have a real-time bean temperature readout, there's great inexpensive options out there like this that cost anywhere from $15 to $30. But what if I want my thermometer to do more? What if I could take this real-time bean temperature reading and have a computer record it and save it as a repeatable profile? That's called data logging or roast logging. And the most popular software for this is probably Artisan. Artisan will record your thermocouple's readings and even plot it into a graph, and it's free. Now this is the goal for most roasters when they install a temperature probe. Oh, and by the way, I'm working on a follow-up video for this that I will focus entirely on Artisan, how to use it, how to make it work for you. Once that video is up, I'll have that linked in the description below, but until then, I'll just leave a link for my current Artisan settings, and you're welcome to use those if you'd like. But let's get back to this video if data logging on a computer is your goal, you're gonna need a thermometer with a USB interface. Now there's two options here that I've used and that I can recommend, Fidgets and Maztec. Fidgets require two separate units, the actual thermometer and a USB interface for your computer. The Maztec MS6514 is a thermometer as well as a USB interface all in one. Now Fidgets are a little less expensive, but I vastly prefer the Maztec for one big reason you get a temperature readout right on your thermometer. You see, fidgets don't have a display, so you have to be plugged into a computer in order to see what the bean temperature is. The Maztec has its own temperature readout right on the unit. So just in case you don't feel like plugging into your computer or maybe it's not working or you don't want a data log that day, the MS6514 is the thermometer I end up choosing most of the time because I like flexibility and options. Finally, I'm gonna need a couple miscellaneous items to complete my build. First, I need a way to hold the thermocouple in place that allows me to position it exactly where I want in the roast chamber. Um, for my build, I just used two four millimeter drill bit stops. Now, depending on the thermocouple I chose, I might have also used a compression fitting or a mounting nut for a really professional looking final product, but that would make this installation a lot more involved. And I like simple. Last, depending on which thermocouple or thermometer I might have chosen, uh, I might need a adapter plug. And I chose a thermocouple with naked wires. And the mass deck requires a plug. So I need a thermocouple plug adapter. Finally, it's time to install my thermocouple. Well, one last thing, an important disclaimer. Now, this video is intended to be a demonstration of how I installed a thermocouple for use with my SR800. It's not meant to be an instructional video and we don't take any responsibility for injuries, damage to your roaster, or for voiding your roaster's warranty as a result of modifying your roaster. If you don't feel confident modifying your roaster or using power tools, I'd strongly suggest you don't try this at home. No modification is worth compromising your roaster's functionality or more importantly, an injury to yourself or others. So again, if despite these warnings, you decide to modify your roaster anyway, please be careful, take your time and keep kids and pets away from your work area. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into it. Speaking of not ruining my roaster, I decided to mount my thermocouple to the chaff collector lid. This seems to be the best place to mount it for a couple reasons. One, if I mess up, I've only ruined a chaff collector lid, and they're significantly less expensive to replace than the SR800 base. In fact, I'd recommend having a spare lid on hand for all sorts of reasons. Two, for me, drilling through the roast chamber is just out of the question. 
Glass is basically impossible to drill through correctly without some really expensive specialized equipment and experience. If you don't believe me, just ask Kent from Razo Roasting. With that out of the way, the next question was, where should I drill the hole? I decided to place it just off center of the lid. This way my thermocouple will still pass through the hole in the chaff collector bottom and leave this little center bracket intact. To help prevent cracking, I placed a piece of painter's tape over the top of the lid. Now I'm not sure this is necessary, but I figure it's better safe than sorry and it's much easier to see my mark for where to drill with a black sharpie. Next, I needed a drill. A drill press is the ideal tool for this job and would make it a piece of cake, but I don't have one, so I reached for my trusty cordless drill. I then decided on a drill bit. It seemed safest to start small and work up to the size needed to fit the thermocouple rather than go in with a large bit right away. So I chose a 1 16th inch bit to make a pilot hole. I then moved up to 1 8 inch and finished with 5 32nds inch, which was perfect for my 4 millimeter thermocouple. Then I found a good spot for drilling because I needed to stabilize the lid while keeping it as flat as possible to drill a straight hole. In our warehouse, we have tons of pallets, which work perfectly for this. I set my lid with the middle of it positioned over the space between the boards, like so. I also clamped it firmly in place using two locking clamps. I knew that drilling this hole was when I was most likely to injure myself and mess up the installation, so I took my time. So let's fast forward a bit. Last but not least, if you're really careful, you can pry off the brackets on the bottom of your lid and thoroughly clean out any debris from drilling, but I didn't trust myself to do this without breaking them, so I just used compressed air to clean it. Now that I have my lid drilled for my thermocouple, it's time to decide how far into my chamber I want it to sit. I added a normal 225 gram batch of coffee to my roast chamber to help determine the ideal mounting height. Next, I placed one of my drill bit stops on my thermocouple before sliding on the chaff collector assembly. You can see that my thermocouple sits at a bit of an angle since, despite my best efforts, I didn't drill the hole perfectly straight. Again, a drill press would have made this a cinch. Anyways, I like to position my thermocouple as far from the heat source as possible in order to minimize the interference it creates in accurately measuring the bean temperature. With the understanding that once the roaster is running, the fan will push the beans higher, I decided to place the tip of the thermocouple at the very top of the bean pile while it's resting. Now I can tighten down my drill bit stop to prevent the thermocouple from dropping any lower. I like to add a second bit stop to the bottom of the thermocouple to keep it from being pushed upward by the fan. And hey, I want to give a big thanks to Richard Culp and Bob Perry from our Captain's Crew Facebook group for suggesting I try drill bit stops for this. They're a simple and robust solution. Also thanks to Brian C. from our group who mounted his thermocouple using a mounting fitting and nut assembly from Fidget. I think this method looks really professional and clean, but Fidget only has fittings for 3.2 millimeter thermocouples, which were too small for my 4 millimeter one. Next, I needed to connect the thermocouple to my Maztac thermometer. Like I mentioned earlier, that means I need to install an adapter plug to my thermocouple. This is a pretty simple matter of using a mini screwdriver to open the plug's assembly. Open the post. And wrap the wires around them before closing it again. I made sure to connect the red wire to the positive post and the black wire to the negative post. Then I just have to plug it into the Maztec. There are positive and negative markings on the inputs of the Maztec to make this super straightforward. Finally, I can plug the Maztac into my computer using the supplied USB cable. 
If you want the Maztec to talk to your computer, you have to press and hold this connect to PC button until you hear a beep. I also needed to download a driver to get Maztec to work properly with Windows, but that only took a couple minutes. You can download Artisan for free from artisan-scope.org, but hey, if you use Artisan and find it helpful, consider donating to show the developers how grateful you are. And that's it. I'm ready to start data logging my bean temperature in Artisan. Like I said, I've got a video in the works all about using and configuring Artisan for the SRI 540 and SR800. Once it's out, I'll have a link for it in the description below. So there you have it, how I installed a thermocouple in my Fresh Roast SR800. I really hope you found this video helpful and I hope you learned something new. And if you did, leave us a like right down below and subscribe for more coffee roasting and brewing guides. If you have questions about roasting or suggestions of your own, please leave us a comment down below. We really do read all our comments we try to respond to them quickly. We've got lots more guides on home roasting, so check those out and be sure to visit us at thecaptainscoffee.com for all your home roasting needs. That's all for us today, so thank you for watching and happy roasting.